Good evening and welcome to Meet UCE. For those of you new to our ministry, UCE stands for Universal Chastity Education. I'm Sarah Smith. I am the USA Director of UCE. With your help, we have been reaching young people with a message of sexual purity and chastity in Uganda, Tanzania, and Burundi. Since 2004, when Pueblo physicians, doctors Ken and Kim Dernovsik, founded UCE, more than half a million youth have made chastity commitments. For more background about UCE, after this program, I invite you to watch the six-minute video entitled, A Light Shines from Africa, on our homepage, uceglobal.org. In the next 30 minutes, you will meet some of the people that UCE's work has touched. Hear more about UCE's healthy, pro-life, international mission work, and learn how you can support our work. We'll begin by introducing you to my colleague, UCE Africa Director and Tanzania Program Officer, Mr. Isaac Lemma. Isaac lives in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. He was a co-founder of UCE Tanzania in 2009 and has been important to UCE Tanzania's leadership ever since. I had a chance to sit down with Isaac to hear about his personal experience with chastity, from his abstinence to faithful marriage, and how he came to educate Tanzania youth about the message of chastity. Could you share with us how UCE has affected your life? Sure. Um, UCE has been part of my life uh, since I was born, but officially UCE was started here in Tanzania in 2009. And um, soon after, I heard the message from Father Runge, Father Francesco, who were the founders of the UCE in Tanzania, and then we were welcome on board also to be part of this good news. Um, so I was very happy and say this really is time for me also to preach the gospel of Jesus in another way of abstain that people should abstain. But you know, charity begins at home. So it started with me. So it begins with me. So with uh, faith and prayers, then I say, God help me now. I have to take this lead and make sure that the rest of the uh, youth in Tanzania also get this message. But that did not affect another person before affecting me. So the first thing that I remember is I started to tell my friends that I'm abstaining. Mm -hmm. And that was the first thing that I, I want to hear what would be their opinion. So some of them, they laughed. Some of them, they say, oh, he's like, are you crazy? And they say, no, no, no. I've so never... how did you come to that conclusion of abstaining that that was the best choice for you? Yeah, I was raised in a Christian family. My mother was a Christian, also my father was a Christian. And when I was in standard five, um, my mother and father started to follow now the uh, Christian life and so I was I was trained to live on Christian life and that's as a Christian I should abstain so since that time that I was living that time but uh, you know with ups and down then I was kind of sometimes believing abstinence is the way of life but growing to believe then when I heard about UC is when I know oh so this is the lifestyle not just even a uh, a kind of life that you should live like two years to three years so it's a lifestyle it's a life that's why i say you see now it's become part and parcel of my life in 2013 and 12 it was a moment of me meeting my wife and when i went there for the first time i had uh, my card so what i did is just say i have first to share the uc message because i believe on that and i want also her to know if she was believing on that mm -hmm. so even before saying anything she asked uh i asked have you been in a relationship and say yes so what happened to those relationships and say you know what uh i have to share this testimony that uh i chose to abstain and i was left behind because i chose to abstain but they want to have sex first before marriage so when i say no they break up with me then i say god has answered the prayer you are my wife now mm -hmm. so we sign the you see us we sign the justice uh, card the commitment card so she has us so what i did that time i said i have only mine signed with my name mm -hmm. so this time i have another card two cards where i sign on the english side and she signed on the other side mm -hmm. and the other card she signed on this side and then i signed on this card mm -hmm. so everyone was a card 
where both of us have signed. Mm. So in that case, then I entered in an engagement. So that was engagement. <laughs> They're using commitment cards. <laughs> <laughs> so till uh, I thank God that it was really a good relationship. But also we have an opportunity. The way it impacted me. So I was not thinking about sex. I was not thinking about uh, when we will start doing sex. So I was thinking about other things. So it gave me a moment of thinking other things that will help us to grow further. So I was really preparing for marriage and not preparing for the wedding. Because there is a difference between the wedding and marriage. The next video clip is the chastity pledge Isaac is talking about. At the end of a UCE outreach, each student has an opportunity to sign a chastity pledge card to commit to this lifestyle. Do you ever wonder if the students keep their chastity commitments? Coming up, you will hear how some students save their signed chastity pledge card and give it to their spouse on their wedding day. Burundi Bishop Martin Niaboho, who started UCE in Burundi in 2006 and served as the national director from 2006 to 2017 tells how he witnessed the current UCE Burundi director, Reverend Onesiphor, pledge to chastity and then share his commitment card with his bride on their wedding day. The parents are happy with the program because they have saved so many lives, mm -hmm. so many lives of young people. Mm -hmm. and. Many of them, when they get married, they invite us. Oh. They invite us. And we write a letter, a certificate to them on that wedding. Oh. I have witnessed myself uh, a couple on that day when uh, the husband just said, uh, you know, there's a... Uh, a commitment card I have signed <laughs> some years wow. back saying that I remain abst uh, abstain until I, I get married. Mm. So I give you this card. And the lady would say, okay, I did, <clears throat> I did the same. This is my card. Mm -hmm. And she will put it in, in her husband's pocket. And they get now a new card. Oh. And the, they both sign a faithful card. Mm. One of them is the current uh, UC National Director oh. in Burundi. <laughs> An important part of UCE's message is second chances. In Africa, they say, our God is a God of second chance. Next, we have an amazing testimony from a 16-year-old girl who was selling her body to pay for her basic needs in life since her family situation was broken. When the UCE team visited her school, God touched her heart in an amazing way to choose abstinence and look for other work to meet her basic needs. Through UCE's help, she made a commitment to God and abstinence, now does handiwork and gardening to earn money, and reports improved academic performance. I'm here to give you my personal testimony. Before ICE reached our school, I was practicing for Maruto sex, not with one boy but with many. One day, ICE had an outreach to our school. They talked about abstainers. I didn't believe it, but I kept asking myself how possible it could be. While doubting, I signed an abstainers card. 
to assure you from that day I'm now abstaining and my my academic performance has, have improved tremendously. I encouraged my fellow students to take heart take heart and try abstainers. To those who support this emission, I I thank you so much to continue supporting UCE to save a life, to save a soul. Your financial support enabled UCE to help that precious girl from Kasese, Uganda, and others like her. Now I'd like you to meet Father Deus Dedit Sekabira, the UCE Masaka Uganda director since 2016, who has a few words about his role in sharing this healthy, godly, chastity message with thousands of youth in Uganda. And again, coming with this message of UCE, you people you are supporting with us, this is a very wonderful message. It's marvelous. We thank you so much for your support. Please, can you clap for yourselves? Clap for yourselves. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I, I, I'm saying this with the out of love and concern. Message came. Now we are moving out to schools. We are moving out to villages. We are moving out to parishes. Spreading this message of UCE. The message of abstinence the message of faithfulness. We are telling the younger people who are in school, please do not, don't touch. I will stand from sex. First concentrate on your studies. Then after you are old enough, you can go to church or to any faith you are, you are in and then you get married. That's the kind of message we are doing in outreaches. And then to the married couples, we are telling them, please, when you married a, a, a wife, when you married a man, please never go out with any other woman. Stick to your husband. Stick to your wife. This kind of message we are giving. And people are responding positively. Positively. And my bishop hearing this, he told me, yes, Father Sekabi, with a team, you must go to each and every school in the diocese. The diocese. Because this message is needed. This message is relevant today for the younger people. The population I was there is very high. God, very high. Because uh, the younger people make up around 65% of the population in Uganda. So the younger people are many. So if we don't touch on them, if we don't preach them the, the, this message, the country will die. The country will die. Because for us, we have to hand over this country to the young generation. So how can we hand over a to a country to a generation which is sick? So we want a generation which is alive. We want a generation which is healthy. Like a you see me, I can speak. Yes. That's why the message we are giving in. How do we do this? We go to schools. We make an outreach. Then when we go to schools, we first make a program with them. We make a, an outreach between two, two hours to two, two and a half hours. Sometimes some schools have a lot of children, like 2,000 children, like, like that. So we give, in, we, are, we give in more time. We first go an outreach, we gather the students in a hall or sometimes under, under the trees, and then we first pray to God. Prayer is paramount because we are doing this, brothers and sisters, through Christ. For us, we cannot do anything without God. God is in the, in the middle. God is the center of our ministry. We cannot put God out. We are doing this, we know God is with us. So we pray, we sing, we invoke the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon us that these people we are going to deliver a message to may get this message well through Christ. When the UCE team travels to give a UCE outreach, they often reach rural areas. Sometimes they have transportation difficulties on the roads, such as flooding and washed out roads from heavy rainfall. Kudos to the team members for their perseverance in sharing this important message.
Coming up, UCE volunteer Tanzanian Deo Gracias shares how UCE has helped him live a healthy life and choose a clear direction for his future so he can succeed. Hello, my name is Dogratias Dioce Ramale, a UCE volunteer from UCE Tanzania. So I started to be a volunteer from 2018 after I completed my advanced level education from Grace Secondary School, which is found in Major Region in Tanzania. So today I'm going to share with you the benefit or my testimony since the last year, August of 2020, up to this year, August of 2021. So, first of all, UCE have made me be able to, to, to realize my goal. You know, before joining UCE in 2017, when I signed my, my card, I had no clear goals, I had no clear visions, I, I did not know who I want to be. I did not have the clear picture of my career. So through UCE, through the seniors, through the leaders and the peer educators, they helped me to pursue my dream to create a, uh, a meaningful goals and be able to achieve them. But as well, the second thing which I got from UC from last year up to today that I continue living health life. Whereby the health life which I'm, I'm living and the full chastity life, whereby I can now prevent myself from STI, STDs, HIV and other related diseases which can be the impact of not living chastity life. So I'm living health life and I'm happy for that. But as well, you know, living health life alone or by yourself is not enough. So from last year, I've been getting the chance to help other youth, fellow youth, to, to develop the, the tendency of living health life through spreading the chastity message by using different platforms like outreaches in different schools but as well different groups in the university and etc. And the other thing which I would like to thank the UCE Global UC Tanzania that I managed now to complete my university education. So I was pursuing Bachelor of Art in Psychology whereby even the selection of the the Bachelor of degree which I was, I was taking was being influenced by the UCE team in Tanzania. So I, I did not know where to go. So I, I had the clear chastity message, I had the clear goals, but about career, I was not sure. So UCE helped me to be who I am, to be where I am, to live a health life, and I'm inspiring other youth to live a health life. So I would like to, to thank the donors, all donors from all over the world from, for supporting the programs in UC Tanzania and in other countries. So we really thank you and we really appreciate your help and we are in need of your help to continue to support other youth to pursue their dreams, but also to live health life. Thank you. UCE's chastity message has had many wonderful results. Next, a teacher from Uganda explains how the pro-life message of UCE has brought about a decline in teen pregnancies. I a teacher at Kivale Senior Secondary School. UCE has helped us very much. Before UCE, we are losing five to ten students to early and unwanted pregnancies. But UCE outreach has helped us. We, we are now two years. We are now two years. We have not received or record any, pre, any case about pregnancies. Then we thank UCE. Thank you, UCE members, and add more support in UCE. Thank you for helping UCE reduce teen pregnancies. Now, I want you to meet Mary Kitaponda, UCE Tanzania Assistant Manager, who shares how the Tanzanian government values UCE's chastity message and its results. 
They first require government permission to go into the schools. At the end of the clip, you will hear how, at the Tanzania government's request, UCE helped decrease the pregnancy rate at Kwakulosa School. Note Mary's personal joy of working for UCE since 2011. Does the government um, see that UCE is making a difference to fight AIDS? Yes, okay. they find it. Oh. For example, there is one school, we go there to ask permission to talk with the students, then the head of the school ignores us, said that they have no chance to give us. Then after one year, they found there is two, there is seven girls who are pregnant. Mm -hmm. Then the government come to us to ask why Kilosa, Kwakilosa secondary schools, there is many pregnancy. Are you going, uh, are you continue going there or you stop there? Then we explained that the head of school council about UCE. He didn't want us to go there. Then that government sent us again and go there and said to the school of the head of school, every month UCE must come here and teach about abstinence and teach about chastity. So we tried to go there. Nowadays there is no pregnant there, and also the behavior of the student changed total. So you see, it's like a part and parcel of my life mm -hmm. and I like it, I love it and I will continue working with the UCE whenever I go. Tanzania has had a very special way of spreading the UCE message. Some students sign a UCE commitment card, graduate, and land a job in a region of Tanzania that has never been visited by UCE. The teacher you will hear is one of those who himself signed a UCE chastity card when he was a student. Now, as a teacher, he brings in the UCE team to give an outreach at his school. These are the teacher's words at the end of the UCE outreach. The translator from Swahili into English is Father Aidan Alungi, UCE Tanzania co-founder and national director since 2008. I had the opportunity to witness this special testimony. But when I went to high school, then I come to get the message of UCE. Then I was happy that, that I found the club of UCE over there. Today I have met Brother Isaac. Yeah, he came there when the club was being yes. opened with Gina. And also another brother Gregor. But today but they have the one who just invited them here. How do you feel how do you feel that when the future also can invite you see wherever you are? So I asked him what we have learned. So we have to be a messenger, a preacher of UCE wherever you are going to stay. I want to promise Isaac that here UCE will be here. UCE's chastity message has also touched the hearts of the people in Burundi, and many are becoming peer role models. This next student from Burundi describes how UCE is helping her to succeed. Listen as she describes how others are now walking in her feet, something like we would say they are now walking in our shoes. <laughs> Dr. 
Abo tuvukana baraneze ko. Bani girako bimeze neza. Mu kibano naho nyine bimeze neza. Abo tubana babonye comportement fixe bani girako. Yese pishuri naho. Kukiki ngo nafashe. Bimeze neza. Umwivu meze neza. Ndetse numuyobozi arabishima. Ndetse nabigisha barabishima. Ingingo nafashe ni nzira yuko muri kazoza ubuzima bwanje bumeze neza. Hamwe cyo saba ubugambo wa Yesu nuko bokongeza kwigisha abajane kugira ngo twese dushikirwe mu bihugu bitandukanye bose bashikirwe ndetse n'amashure atarashikirwa nayo nyene ashikirwe turabashimiye kuri ibyo byose mwadukoreye iyo mutabikora bameze ko bikuye ariko kugidikisha no mvise bo meze neza cyo sabye abantu bajane nkanje nuko twogira ku mugambo wo kwihangana niyo twihangana ubuzima bwacu buzomera neza umugambo wa Sinai dasaze uko okongeza kasho ko kwigisha kugira ngo bimere neza muri kazoza cyo gushaka kizo hotel imbere tufashe deni yo ngingo yo kwihangana ulugatia Your support has helped this student embrace chastity that has touched not only her own life, but the lives of her family and community. Next, I'd like you to meet Resty. She is a UCE volunteer who tells about how UCE has enlightened the people of Masaka, Uganda about the value of chastity, and in doing so, has saved many innocent lives. I'm Norma Tovrestin, a volunteer in the University of Chastity Education, Massacre branch. Uh, I'm happy to inform you that when Dr. Kim, Dr. Ken and Andrew Dedovsek came to Uganda, they introduced us to University of Chastity Education, which has helped us so much. It has touched our hearts. For example, me personally, uh, we learn from them the different things, like abstinence. You know, for, to the youth, it was not so much into us that we should abstain. We thought that uh, living out with one man or another, it is the all of the day. But when we, we were told about chastity, we had to change our minds and we have to live as examples. And here I came to be a volunteer whereby we visit very many places. We visit the parishes, communities, uh, schools, and we tell them different things about abstinence. Here we find a challenge that many of them tell us that you know what? The communities tell us when you're virgin, you have a curse. Very many things are being brought about by the people within the communities, and they are told to these ignorant people. And at the end of the day, we find that very many people are dying because of the ignorance. People didn't know about HIV. People didn't know the effects of the contraceptives. Now, when UCE came, people are aware because we visited very many places and told them very many things about chastity. They are very much aware where by now the school-going children are focused because we tell them that focus on your books, read, uh, avoid be, being at school and, uh, and at the same time having a husband or a wife somewhere. So you see, he has so much helped us. And here we find that people are now knowing the problems that when I go in, in for sex, whether I have condoms, the, 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 uh, the contraceptives, uh, you, have, you will acquire HIV and other sexually transmitted problems eh? like abortion, death, uh, miscarriages, there is uh, neglect, school dropout and here very many people are now coming out and they are knowing the negative effects of having sex at an early age. So, 
here, when you see it, came, it has enlightened very many people. And we thank the donors, we thank the UCE directors for the support they always render to us, especially the UCE team Masaka branch and the UCE team community at large, because it has helped so much to save the innocent lives of people. It has helped so much to bring, to bring out uh, ignorance from people. People are now aware of how to hold their lives, how to uphold things which will help them move on in the future. So I recommend that you should continue to reach to even far, far places where it has not been in existence, so that these people can get to know more about abstinence and faithful living. Thank you so much and God bless. We've heard from UCE staff and volunteers so far. Now, I'd like you to hear from Dr. and Mrs. Dennis and Lynn Gimlin, who explain in their own words why they support UCE. Mrs. Lynn Gimlin also serves on the UCE Board of Directors. What made you first support um, UCE and what made you decide to go on the trip? This is a very transparent organization. Mm. You know what's going on in the organization at all times from your wonderful reports that we get frequently, the mm. updates um, each year, we get a yearly report, and we absolutely are assured that our donations are going directly to funding this ministry. Um, that's always a good thing to know when you support a ministry. Mm -hmm. I think knowing the, knowing the founders personally mm. and knowing that we're like-minded makes it real easy to, to uh, uh, get on board. But I think even above and beyond that, um, what we've seen is that this is a proven, effective message. Mm that the Africans themselves originated, began, yes. and started. Yes. So that in their way of interacting with the values of their culture, they are able to give this message to their young people, and the young people are responding. Next, a direct thank you from UCE Kasese Uganda Director, Father Peter Messerica. He has brought the youth the UCE message since 2013 and describes you, our supporters, as our heroes. I am Reverend Father Peter Masareka from UCE Kasese. Greetings to you. I want to thank the founders of UCE and the donors who are tirelessly supporting the UCE programs. You are our heroes. Heroes in saving many lives through the UCE message. There will always be a need for the UCE message, whether it is to help decrease the cases of HIV AIDS and other STDs, or to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. UCE Africa thanks you directly and asks for your continued support. We are encouraged. We can't give up unless HIV AIDS is finished. Even if it is finished, they are still sexually transmitted diseases. Mm -hmm. mm. Even even those two are finished. We still proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the Christian ethics mm -hmm. to the youth and to the couples. Mm -hmm. We thank everyone who is contributing from one dollar to ten thousand. Anyone of you have gone to ten thousand? <laughs> if you have not done that, 
now from now on what you increase signing big checks big checks to you see at this time i would like to thank a number of people who make this work possible thank you to our uce africa program leaders including mr isaac lemma father peter messerica reverend onesifor father dave stedet sekavira and Father Aidan Alunki. Thank you to each person who contributed a testimony in our program tonight. Special thanks to the many UCE volunteers who help keep our overhead costs low and to UCE staff who make UCE's work possible all year round. My sincere appreciation to our UCE Board of Directors Drs. Ken and Kim Durnovsik, Dr. Sam Ebersall, Mrs. Lynn Gimlin, Dr. Bruce Lundberg, Mrs. Hannah Rush, Reverend Ephraim Radner, for your work in guiding and supporting this ministry. Thank you, Dr. and Mrs. Sam and Sarah Jane Ebersall, Drs. Ken and Kim Durnovsik, and Mr. and Mrs. Don and Helen Banner for your help in putting this special program together. And thank you to you, our supporters. Our international pro-life mission work would not be possible without you since we rely on private donations. In this program, you have truly been able to meet UCE and hear directly from UCE Africa how your support to UCE helps reduce teen pregnancies, helps youth live healthy, godly lives, and gives them renewed hope and a chance to succeed in their future. I ask you to consider giving a donation to support UCE's work. If you're able to give a monthly gift, please also consider that. We can receive your donation online at ucglobal.org forward slash donate or you can make a check payable to Universal Chastity Education and mail to P.O. Box 3541 Pueblo, Colorado. Listen closely. We will close this program with a song written by members of UCE Tanzania. It's called Abstinence for Life. Thank you. God bless you. Brothers and sisters, welcome to Abu's Tenements. Brothers and sisters, welcome to Abu's Tenements. Brothers and sisters, welcome to Abu's Tenements. Because Abu's Tenements, it saved your life. Abu's Tenements is for life. Abu's Tenements. Is for life. Abu's tenants is for life. Abu's tenants to save your life. On a bitana, on me kuwa kama bita. On me kosa tila, hawa chui koko leke ya. Kwanza ziwe tu, on me shimbo kutueleza. Who can we jama? Who na ping wa kwa subila? Watoto wa dogo, ome kuwa ni makaba. Kuwa wa vazo, ni ya ibu kuwa chazama. Nani ya si mame? Nani ya si mame? Abu's tennis is for life. Abu's tennis. Where is Subira? No 
Shimu 